Delicious honey. Yes. Jeff. All Oregon, all pure all raw, right, right from the right, hive. Okay. Right, in the, right from the hive. Right from the hive. So can you tell us how do you do this process? How do you make the honey? Well, the bees make the honey, then we extract it. <laughs> okay. We pull the frames out of the hive. Uh -huh. We cut the wax cappings with a hot knife. Uh -huh. Then we put it into a big spinning machine. Okay. And then we put uh, 30, 40 frames in there. And then it spins really fast. And okay. the honey all comes out of the comb. And right down into the uh, pouring unit. I wanted to ask you, like, how do you know it's the uh, purity of the honey? I mean, because we have control over it. Uh, no, I it mean, doesn't go any anywhere else. Testing, in any way of like testing, how do you know it's? it's Here's a how you thing? can tell. You put it upside down, uh -huh. and the one big bubble comes up. Okay. That means it's pure. Oh. If you put upside down, and there's a lot of little bubbles that come up, then there's things that's been added to it. Oh. Another okay. good indication of pure honey is that it will crystallize. Crystallize. If, it, if it's been adulterated, if uh -huh. there's anything been added, it will okay. not crystallize. I if mean, it crystallizes, you... that means it's pure. Okay. If it doesn't crystallize, then it, there's something added to it. Okay. Yeah. Any other tests that you suggest, like to, you know, there's are two things that you told about the honey. Pretty Just the taste. You can tell pure honey right as soon as you taste it. You know, you know. honey in our uh, Quran, the mm -hmm. book that we follow, mm -hmm. it's mentioned that it has a cure for every disease. It does. It does. Unfortunately, we don't get the pure honey. That's the, the difficult that's part. That's the problem. You know? See, that's the whole key about raw honey, mm. is you cannot heat it past 110 degrees. Oh, I see. If you heat it past that, uh -huh. and most people that mass produce honey, mm -hmm. big factories, mm -hmm. they heat it up to 180. Oh. And all the pollen and all the good enzymes in the honey disintegrates when it's heated that hot. Mm. So which one you think among the flowers is the best honey that you, you, you advise to buy? Um, Probably the buckwheat. The yeah. dark, the dark, dark honeys have the mm. highest amount of antioxidants mm. and the yeah. highest amount of uh, enzymes and amino acids. This is a very strong honey. It's okay. uh, it's very pungent. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, some people don't like it because it's so strong, mm. but it is um, extremely beneficial. Have you heard of manuka honey? Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. It looks like manuka honey. Well. We don't have manuka honey in the United States because mm. manuka mm. is tea tree from um, New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah. So right. the buckwheat is considered the North American manuka. It's stronger. Okay. Because it has all the medicinal properties that manuka mm. does. It has methaglyoxal, uh -huh. which is MGO, which is how they rate uh, manuka honey. Yeah. What yeah. do you think of that one? Oh, it's yeah. nice. Well, it's you know so what's a really, yeah. it's yeah. a really yeah. good one is to take whole garlic Wow. We've, we've fermented it before. You oh. put whole garlic into a jar and then you add honey and you put a lid that burps uh -huh. and then you let it ferment for three weeks. Okay. And the garlic, the liquid from the garlic goes into the honey. It's called alcine from garlic mm -hmm. and uh, it makes the honey super immunity boosting. It's oh. extremely healthy for you. It tastes really good too. So you think in the, during this uh, tough times of COVID-19, you say we will we will take honey with uh, with garlic. Garlic, yes. It boosts your immunity. Yes, yes. Good for uh, defense against coronavirus. It really is. It really All is. Right. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, okay. uh, this is wildflower. This has a lot of pollen. Mm -hmm. It's a very beneficial honey, but that has a really unique flavor. That one is a uh, very. It almost tastes like grapes. Wow. But it's from uh, from Hood River area up in the gorge okay. on the Columbia River. Uh -huh. We have the meadow foam flowers over here. They're yellow and white. Clover has, doesn't have as much flavor. Yeah. It's just pretty basic. Yeah, I just got a book uh, the other day, 101 Uses for Honey, and it's everything from migraines, indigestion. See, honey is very low pH, mm -hmm. so it's very acidic. Okay. So when it goes into your gastrointestines, yeah. it soaks up the acid. Okay. And it helps get rid of it. I mean, where's the ideal time to take that honey? Like before the morning breakfast? And morning, morning and evening. Just before you take the breakfast, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also it helps you sleep deeper. Oh, okay. uh, honey has been proven. It creates melatonin in oh, your body, okay. which converts to serot serotonin, which converts to melatonin. And the melatonin is what helps you sleep deeper. So you don't wake up as much. Okay. So if you take a nice tablespoon or a teaspoon of honey and tea, before bed, like a chamomile tea that helps you sleep. Okay. That'll really keep you sleeping. Uh, have you ever had bee pollen? 
yeah, you know what bee pollen is? It's, it's actually wax, it's, right? it's the little pollen sacs yeah. on the uh, the bees c capture that. Mm -hmm. In fact, you could probably see it over at one of our hives. Okay. But we take bee pollen and we blend it with wildflower honey. Mm -hmm. And so we this has 50 times the pollen that regular honey has. Okay. And this is a very unique taste. Wow. And it's uh, it's very good for you. Oh. Did you know that bee pollen has more protein than red meat? Thanks so much, uh, Jeff, for the nice information on honey. Now, can we have some valuable information on the bee? So when a bee goes into the flower, he get, they get their whole face um, immersed in pollen. And then they use their legs and they brush it back. And they have bee pollen baskets on their rear legs. And the baskets are what holds the pollen. And these are the grains. These are the eyes. It has extra eyes on top. These are called oscilia. And these help them find where they're going. But the bee eyes are very, very, uh, very good. Uh, drones have enormous eyes. Bees are in trouble too. You know that. Bees don't like black. That's why a bee suit is always white because when they see black, they think of bears. So these two boxes here, this is where the queen lays. She lays her eggs in here, and they store pollen and nectar. And then this is for the extra honey. So this is what we keep, and this is called a super. Mm -hmm. So they, the queen stays down here, and then the bees come up and they store their honey up here, mm -hmm. and we only take the top box. We leave the rest so that they have enough to uh, live through winter. So how much time does it take to get the hive full? Uh, mean, like, this time of the year, the queen lays 2,500 eggs a day. Wow. Every that's 45 a lot of eggs. seconds, she's dropping an egg into a honeycomb. Wow. So you can go from 10,000 bees to 50,000 bees in one month. No. And what, you have to, what we've had problems with is if the bees run out of space and the queen has to keep laying, they'll leave. They swarm. Mm. And the queen will let the half of, she'll take half of the colony with her. And we've had two swarms already this year. So they swarmed into that tree, mm -hmm. and they also swarmed down below. And it's one of the most uh, amazing acts of nature you'll ever see when the bees swarm. They're just, they're just everywhere, and they just mm -hmm. move over. They, uh, they land on a branch, and then they stay there, and then they send scout bees out. And the scout bees go to try to find holes in trees that they can make their permanent nest. And when the when the scouts come back, they do a little dance and they tell the other bees where they're at. And the dance, it's a circle eight, it's called a waggle dance. Uh -huh. And what they're doing is they're telling the longitude and the latitude and the distance mm. to how far away they need to go. And mm. then the other bees watch that dance and then they follow. It's amazing. Subhanallah. It's a miraculous thing. I mean, there's a nature, there's a God who is controlling all these things happening, yes. right? Yes, yes. Subhanallah. And if you get stung, what happens? I mean, what do you do? Like The main you... thing you have to do is make sure you get the stinger out. You have to take like a, a credit card uh -huh. or something and you have to scrape it to make sure the stinger comes out because if the stinger stays in, it will just continue to uh, make you swell. So when the, the nectar is, um, is full and ready to cap, then mm -hmm. the bees produce the wax uh -huh. and then they cap the end of the uh, comb. Okay. And so when we cut the wax off to be able to extract the honey, we collect the beeswax mm -hmm. and then run it through a strainer and purify it. Mm. So but the wax also has a medicinal value? It does. It actually has pollen in it and it's actually beneficial for allergies. Allergies. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So everything about the bees is beneficial. It really is. Right. Yeah, you were telling me Here's something the that uh, the oh, bees yeah, are in trouble and bees are going yeah. away. Can you tell me what exactly they are facing problem now? Well, they're facing uh, varroa mites, uh -huh. which uh, which kill them. They're uh, up against a lot of pesticides that that kill them. They're systemic pesticides. A lot of um, uh, seeds now are soaked in neonicotinoid, mm -hmm. and the neonicotinoid plants grow, and then they're systemic to the bees. They mm -hmm. kill the bees. So, so they have uh, colony collapse disorder, is what we say. So what do we do to protect the, uh, the bees from getting extinct? We human beings, what should we do? We should uh, plant pollinating flowers, uh, become backyard beekeepers uh, mm -hmm. to help the, build up the genetic strength of the bees. You were telling me something that if bees goes away, we go away. So what, what, is, what do you mean by that? Well, like I said, 
bees pollinate one out of every three bites of food. We have a picture of Whole Foods Produce Department complete. And then if you take everything away that bees pollinate, that's what you're left with, hardly anything. Whoa. So um, all berries are pollinated by bees. A lot of the uh, vegetables are pollinated by bees, herbs. Um, they're very important. So without them, the pollination will not be taking place? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Yes. SubhanAllah. Now we all see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with honeybee and how the honey is produced in such an amazing way. Lastly, I'd like to thank Mr. Jeff for sharing his knowledge with us. Please visit his website, beliciousshoney.com. Thank you all.